Hello, hello everyone. Hello teacher, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing, Gilberto? Good day, fine teacher. Thank you for asking. Excellent. It's kind of hot today, right? Yes. I feel the weather is warm. Let's see if somebody else is coming. A few of you will be listeners, so I don't know about the rest. Maria Leticia is coming in. Gabriela. Hello, Gabriela. Hello, teacher. Good evening. I see you, you shared your question, Mr. Gilberto. In the chat. Right? Yes, teacher, in the, I share in the chat. Okay. Okay, we're going to talk about it soon. I'm just checking who else is joining us today. Okay, Mauricio is reporting. He will be a listener. He's driving. <clears throat> okay, well, um, I was waiting for some of you to join. I'm going to start checking attendance. I hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to our session number 19, meaning that we are missing just a few more sessions for this module. Okay, so, well, right now we're going to, I'm going to check attendance. So give me one second here. I'm going to open. To open the, the page. Let me check, let me check. Here it is. Wait, wait, wait. Here. Okay. I'm ready to check attendance. So we start with Danny Anthony, Siwens Aventura. Um, okay, he's a listener. Let's see, uh, Gilberto Benito Santa Maria Rios. Present teacher. Okay, let's see, Jose Andres Martinez Perez. Andres is driving. Okay, let's see, Jose Israel Martinez Rodriguez. Hmm. I think this is the first time I don't see Israel here. Probably he will join us soon. 
a uh, Julio Aristides Paz Rivas. Not here yet. Um, let's see. Lady Joana Hernández Ventura. Where is Lady? Not here yet. Uh, Luis Rodrigo Morales Ortiz. He said he was going to be a listener, but I don't see him here yet. Um, Maria Leticia Realigenio González, listener. Eh, Mauricio de Jesús Buruca Velázquez, he's here, I think. Yes, he's here as a listener. Rebeca María Cardona Juárez, listener too. Roberto Carlos Gámez Alvarenga, I don't see Roberto here yet. Eh, Rolando Danilo Sánchez Arteaga, as a listener. Sofía Karina Crespo Martínez. I see you there, Sofia. Can you say present or are you a listener? Sofia Karina, are you a listener? Okay, got it. I hadn't seen your message. Okay, and let's see who is missing. Yesenia Gabriela Aguilar Granadeño. Present teacher. Excellent. And Israel, welcome. Hello, teacher. Hello, good evening. Okay, very good. I just finished checking attendance, but you're here. Okay, well, um, I said yesterday that because we didn't finish sharing the questions that I asked you to create based on the subtopics that we were discussing, right, related to branding. Uh, so today we're going to start with that, okay? We're going to share the questions. I see a couple of you already shared it in the chat. So I'm going to start with those. And then uh, I would like the rest to please share it in the chat here in, well, in, in the WhatsApp chat or here in the Zoom chat, please. Uh, okay, I have Gilberto's question. Uh, he had the first topic and just so you remember what we were discussing, I'm going to share the screen with the, the article. Let's see. Okay, here we are. So, for example, Gilberto, he had the first subtopic. Uh, this article is related to five ways to nail your brand design. And yesterday I explained that nail means to perfect, right? To perfect your, your branding a design your brand design okay so uh, let's see gilberto's question is about the first topic just give me one second because here i have written down the people that were assigned each of the topics okay so gilberto got number one get objective opinions on your brand Mm -hmm. Teacher, uh, I, I'm, uh, yes. I am identify uh, and get it to know your target market. Ah, okay, okay, uh, I, I see. It no, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, let's see. So identify and get to know your target market. Uh -huh. Yes. And your question is, how do you identify your market? or do your customer screening? Okay, and you have two, two answers. First, we ask our clients to refer friends or family with similar business to use. Okay, and two, in our company, we survey what products you're interested in for your business and the price you pay for them. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, 
the answer needed to be related to this information, okay? Because the idea for you to create the questions is that you are able to understand the topic better by um, creating the question and also looking for the answer, okay? But the question needs to be focused on the this information. In this case, for example, how do you identify your market or you or do your customers screening? How do you identify your market? Well, um, you can, the survey, let me see. Well, you can study, right? With uh, the, the target market with social platforms, which social platforms they use, uh, the colors that are attractive to them. Um, Okay, so the answer needs to be in the same topic here. Okay, well, um, thank you, Gilberto, for sharing this question about identifying your target market. I also thank have, you, okay, I also have here in the WhatsApp group, I have the answer from Sophia. Well, the question, uh, it's the same topic. <laughs> Identify and know your target market, okay. Um, uh, she presents a summary. We must study our target market, know what, know how, know where I can satisfy my customer to make him interested in my product. Okay, very good summary, Sophia. Great. Um, well, those are the ones I have in the chat, in the WhatsApp. Let's check if we have another one here. Mm, no, I don't see it. Um, I don't know. Is someone else uh, ready with their question? Remember the task was to write a question, okay? Okay, I'm gonna say it in Spanish. Les pedí que escribieran una pregunta del parrafito que les asigné porque cuando nosotros leemos algo, eh, Especialmente en inglés, si no sabemos todo el vocabulario, pues hay algunas ideas que se nos pueden eh, quedar en el aire. Pero si una manera de entender a mayor profundidad una lectura es haciéndonos preguntas de esa misma lectura. Entonces, por ejemplo, yo les decía en el topic number one, get objective opinions on your brand. Ok, that is the topic, right? So basically, the main idea is about that. Like, um, so how can I ask a question that embodies the whole text? Okay, una pregunta que yo me haría para entender mejor el texto en este caso sería, okay, how can I get objective opinions from, for my brand? And of course, the answer is here, right? Um, so that's that 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 was the idea, okay? That you could ask a question about your topic, uh, so that you could go back and read it and understand it better, okay? Uh, let's see. How about okay? We have since nobody is sharing voluntarily, I'm going to be naming the people that I assign the subtopics to. Oh, here I see Israel. Okay, I'm gonna read yours, Isabel. Um, <laughs> everybody has identified your target market. Okay, that means you cannot sell everything for everyone when you identify your um, target market, gives you the opportunity to specialize in the product to give more profit, okay? It is easy to fulfill customers needs. Very good, excellent. Okay, how about um, well, Rodrigo is a listener right now, but he has number one. Gabriela, you have number two. Do you have the question, Gabriela? Okay. Um, Gabriela, please specify if you are a listener today, because I don't know. I ha I haven't seen any message from you. 
No, teacher. And sorry, I don't have the question too. Uh, okay. But... <laughs> okay. Let's see, uh, Rolando. I think Rolando is a listener. Let me check. Yes. Uh, Rolando has number two as well. Well, Israel has number three. Sofia, number three. You both shared. Julio, number four. But Julio, I think today is a listener. Let me check. Yes. And Roberto got number five. And Roberto is also a listener today. Okay, well, um, again, the idea is that we are able to understand a paragraph or a, a, a reading uh, more deeply by asking questions, okay? But uh, also uh, in, this, uh, in this article, there were some words that I was like highlighting. Well, I I explained some of them. Um, for example, here at the beginning, let me see. Aha. Uh -huh. For example, I said this one. No, I didn't explain it, but I was like highlighting. Okay. So we have blind spot. Um, okay, let me type it here in the chat blind spot also please start looking at the words that i will be sharing with you okay silo that was another one that i highlighted i'm not assigning them specifically to you but i would like you to look them up and share the, their definition or an example let me see. Ah, this one. I didn't uh, highlight this one yesterday, but it's a good one too. Enticing. What is enticing? Enticing. Um, okay, I explained persona, but I would like you to look it up as well. Persona. Remember that it's not the same as in Spanish, okay? <laughs> Persona in español is, I mean, in English is person, but in this case, it, it means something else. Needy, greedy. This is kind of an idiomatic expression, needy, greedy. Needy, greedy. Okay, let's see what else. Ah, I explained this one yesterday, but I'm gonna check if you if you remember. AKA. Uh huh. I think that's it. Ah, this one. In one fell swoop. In one fell swoop. This is another idiomatic expression. Okay. Well, um, how about I give you, let's say we take around five minutes to look up this vocabulary and then we can share. Okay, we have blind spot, silo, enticing, persona, nitty gritty, AKA in one fell swoop. Okay, let's see. 
I got this question from Leticia. How do I know if my market is target? We have the advantage of being the only large pharmacy in town, which gives us the opportunity to cover the needs for medications of the majority of patients. And we also have the advantage of having a doctor who feels 98% of okay. Okay, Leticia. The only thing I would change, Leticia, from your paragraph, from your description, is the word pharmacy, because pharmacy, well, at least in the U.S. context, is understood as, um, well, unless this is your case. If a pharmacy is usually understood as a store, uh, well, they may have medicines, but they also have other things. Um, usually, like the word farmacia in, Sp in Spanish, is translated in English into English as drugstore, which is mostly where we sell medicine. So, drugstore. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't remember if it's separate or together. Okay, uh, well, right now I'm giving you some time for you to check this vocabulary that I uh, shared in the chat based on the article. So um, we can take, well, you don't have to take all of them, but some that you find more interesting. So let's take, well, right now we have about four minutes. Let me get my timer ready. And I'm going to write the instruction here. Look up two to three words from the list.
Okay, everyone. Let's see how many of these words we found out. Okay, let's see. Gilberto, you found enticing. Mm, ah, okay. I think we got confused here, Gilberto, <laughs> because you got the word sentencing. Sentencing. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's enticing. This is the this, let me see the third word, right? This one. Enticing. Mm -hmm. Does somebody did somebody get the meaning for enticing? Enticing, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, nobody else got the meaning for enticing. Okay, how about blind spot? Who got the meaning for blind spot? Okay, you tell me and I'm going to write it here. Mm -hmm. No one got blind spot? Okay, let's see how about silo. Silo. Mm -hmm. It looks like we haven't worked on them, right? <laughs> nobody, nobody is answering. Nobody's answering, so that means nobody was working on them. Only Gilberto. <laughs> okay, well, it's your homework then. Since you didn't look the map here, it's your homework. I'm going to be asking you tomorrow. Um, okay. Let's move on because we have another topic to, to continue with tonight. I wanted to emphasize on this vocabulary because it was part of the reading, okay? But if I tell you all the vocabulary, then it's less significant than if you, than if you look it up, okay? But, um, well, maybe you can check it out later today or tomorrow and then you can share. But I'm going to use, okay, I'm going to, since Gilberto shared the word well, he was trying to use enticing. Okay, in this case, uh, Gilberto, the word enticing means um, motivating. motivating. Mm, uh -huh. In a way, it's also a synonym of attractive. Yes, attra adjective. attractive. You found it, right? Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. So something that, in this case, when we are talking about brands, it's like saying uh, that it, it, it makes customers uh, feel interested, right, in buying the product. Mm. All right. Yes, yes, uh, Maria Leticia. This is what I was explaining to you <laughs> about the difference between pharmacy and drugstore. Because pharmacy has other, other items. Um, for example, let me see. One that is very popular in the US is a green, I forgot the word. I forget, <laughs> but there is a very famous brand of pharmacy in, in the US, green something. I forget. Teacher, mm -hmm. drug, drugstore is um, the superior of the pharmacy. 
Um, no, not necessary. Not necessary. Okay. Uh huh. I mean, um, the thing is that I mean, at least in the American context, there is a difference between pharmacy and drugstore. Drugstores are the ones that focus mostly on medicine. In pharmacy, is a store. It's more like a convenience store where you can find some medicines, probably the 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 ones that we use, what we call in English over-the-counter medicine, like Dolophin, Alka-Seltzer, you know, those that don't oh. need prescription. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, in some cases, they sell makeup or sodas or cookies, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's, that's the difference. Um, but... That I mean, if you use it, it's, it's uh, understanding. It's not like it's totally different, right? Because it, it is related to medicine still. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, um, let's see. We're going to wrap up this topic here. As I said before, uh, let's look up those, those words that we have in the list later on. Um, because we don't have any more time, but let me see. I'm going to close this part. And, well, uh, if you notice, okay, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, okay, let me go here. Okay, yesterday uh, we were practicing let me see let me see let me see okay yes okay so yesterday we worked on this um conversation remember uh, we were talking about the shoes that make people float like feather and um so like how good the, the publicity is or the brand is that people actually buy the shoes no matter the price, right? So we discussed the, the conversation and I told you that there were some phrases here that are highlighted. For example, make you float, makes customer buy and get all these people to buy, okay? So, these expressions that you see highlighted, they are called causative, causative, okay? Causative. So in order to start understanding how this structure works or how it goes, uh, we're going to watch a video, okay? Where they explain the meaning and also the structure. Okay, so let's uh, go over the video. Here we are. Let's let's finish watching the ad. <laughs> My friend Sabrina and I'm back. Okay, so there we go. It's actually a little bit. Oh, let me see. It's about eleven minutes, but I'm going to show you just like the main parts. Okay, not not the whole video, but I want you to see what causative means and the structure. Okay, so let's pay attention. And when we finish, um, I'm going to reinforce this information with what we have in our textbook, in our manual. Okay, so right now, let's watch. Well, last evening, I happened to meet my friend's daughter, who's in class three. And uh, she was in a very bad mood, very upset, very angry, very rebellious. So I asked her what happened. And she said, I dislike my teacher. She makes me do a lot of homework. And I said, okay, that's all right. She has a right to make you do a lot of homework. And well, she uses authority, so she can make you do a lot of homework. Fair enough. So she went and told her mother that I'm really upset. And the mother said, well, you have to do your homework. She said, I'll do it on one condition if you buy me an ice cream. So you know what she did? She got her mother to buy her ice cream. So 
what we're going to learn in today's class using two verbs make and get not in the literal meaning but as causative verbs so they're causatives when i say causatives means someone is causing an action from the other person so you cause someone to do something you make people do things okay so we're going to take a look at make now make is the present form the past is made Well, in the beginning of this lesson, I told you, she was upset because she said, my teacher makes me do a lot of homework. That means when she used make, it means you make somebody do something. That's the structure. So when you make somebody do something, you're using authority, power, or you force someone, you compel someone, leaving the other person with little or no option left, okay? So it could be out of force, you compel, use authority. take a look at the first example i wanted to get home early now well i'm talking about yesterday so i wanted the past tense i wanted to get home early but my boss made me stay late well last minute work pressure had to complete a project so my boss made me stay late now why am i using made me stay late because my boss caused me he is the causative that i stayed late all right now let's look at the structure make somebody do something so this is the past made somebody who's that somebody me do something do what stay it now why do i use the structure is because my boss uses authority he doesn't have to you know request me or kind of beg me or cajole me to stay late it's my job He's given me some assignments that I have to complete or rather I had to complete yesterday. So he made me stay late. Now, if you look at the verb made, that's in the past tense. It does not mean to make or to produce or to manufacture something. It takes a different meaning. It becomes a causative verb. And this causative verb in this structure means somebody Okay, I'm going to pause there um, and I'm going to reproduce the structure that she was explaining this way. Okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to do it here. So let me see, annotate. Okay, so you have the verb. Let's see, let's do it here. Okay, causative. So we have a um, subject. Then you have make, which can be in the present or in the past or in the future. I mean, the tense doesn't matter, but you use make. Okay, um, someone do something okay for example my boss made me made me work late yesterday it's the compliment right my boss made me Okay, so may, here we have make in the past, right? And then the someone is me, okay? And what what is the something that he made me do? Work late, okay? Work late. So this is how the structure for the causative with make goes, right? And we already heard the explanation in terms of what it means. Like when somebody 
tells you to do something. They don't ask you, they don't beg you, they don't, it's like, for example, if I tell Gilberto, okay, Gilberto, today you're going to be in class until 10.30. So I'm not asking Gilberto if he wants to be in class until 10.30 um, or if he needs to do something else. No, I'm just telling him to do something, right? So in this case, is I'm making him, okay? Because it is a, not his choice, not his option. It is like a command that I um, give him, okay? Uh, so when we use make, we uh, usually, right? The subject is a person who has authority over you. Okay, for example, my boss, who else has authority in, in your case? Let's see, let's think. Think about other people that can make you do things because they have some kind of authority. Uh-huh. What other examples of people or subjects can you think of? Some people can say my my mom, my father, my house, my husband, my wife, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my well, even my daughter. For example, I can say my daughter makes me buy Paw Patrol toys very often, <laughs> okay? She doesn't have, well, she kind of, I, I, I mean, I buy them because I, I want her to be happy, right? So she makes me buy this kind of toys for her. So those are examples. Now let's, um, Continue checking here in the video, the, the case for get, okay? Vamos a esperar que pase el, el, el advertising. Let me see. Oops. Makes you, make somebody do something. Okay, so you're my boss, made me, I'm, I'm the somebody, do what? Stay late. We, us. Heavy day. All right? Okay, this is so, another example. There was no option. He used his authority. And now we're going to take a look at how to use get in causative sentence. Okay, so when you use get, the structure is get somebody... to do something. Okay. So you get somebody to do something. It does not get here, does not mean literally to bring. It's just a way of saying you get somebody to do something. Now this structure is a little different from make because like you saw, make is you make somebody do something. Here is you get somebody to do something. So when do we use a structure like this? We use it when you want to say that you have really convinced, maybe begged or even kind of scheduled someone to do something. Sometimes you have to make a lot of requests to people to do something for you. So that is the time you use get somebody to do something. Okay. So in my first example, he got me to sell my old car at a very low price. So a friend of mine really convinced me and requested me to sell my car to him at a very low price. So he really 
maybe even beg me, cajole me and said, Rachna, we're good friends, we've been friends for long, so come on, sell the car to me at this price. So yes, so he got me to sell my car, okay? Now, if I use, he made me sell my car, it, I mean, would your friend really force you and compel you? No, he would request you and kind of convince you to sell the car at a very low, low price. So you're using the past tense of get, that's got. Okay, so he got me to sell. So in this structure, remember, you have to use to, unlike in the structure of make. Okay, in the next example, Maria always gets her baby to stop crying. Now, when a baby is crying, can you shout at him and force him? No. What do we do? We cajole him, we convince him, we probably show him toys and, you know, try to calm him down. So, the effort, the convincing that you put in, okay, or that you do is always gets her baby to stop crying. Now, this is the present form of the verb. And remember to put an S because this Maria is the third person. So well, a regular habit of hers, she always gets her baby to stop crying. Don't forget to add the two because this would be wrong. Maria always gets her baby to stop crying. No, she gets her baby to do something. Okay, so get somebody, a baby, to do something to stop crying. Okay. Ma okay. We're going to stop here. Mm -hmm. In this time, okay, I'm going to go back to our manual because we also have some explanation there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Here on page 28, we're going to focus there. I'm going to add it. Okay, so we have a, the chart that explains a, the meaning of both, right? Make and get. And here you can see the difference that she was explaining in the video. You can see the difference in the structure, right? With make, we follow this structure. The, well, after the subject here, I added the subject. So after the subject, you have make, then someone, then the verb in base form, okay? So for example, the marketing department, in this case, makes because it's simple present. The someone in this case is employees and the verb in base form in this case is revise, okay? Revise what? Goals and metrics every month. And now let's check another example or a, an example with get. In this case, we have a, um, well, after the subject, right? We have get plus someone plus infinity. Okay, example here. I, and in this case, I'm using the modal can. I can get, and then the someone is customers. And the infinitive, the verb in infinitive here is to love, to love our premium services. So when we say infinitive, it means that we are adding the to, right? When we say in base form, we don't add the to, okay? Well, uh, let's continue analyzing this example. So let me see um, who can help me with the next one. Gabriela, Gabriela, let's look at the second example here. I need you to please identify uh, the form of make, the someone, and the verb in base form in this example. Okay, the make is made. Okay, we're using the past. Mm -hmm. Someone look, I think. The someone needs to be. Uh, sorry, people. People, uh huh. Ma plus verb in base form is look. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the rest, if 
is of course the complement of this verb, right? Look for products from different companies. Okay, now let me ask Gilberto. Gilberto, let's analyze the second example in the case of get. Okay, first look for the, okay, the form of get that we have in this example. Yes, teacher. The project manager. Mm -hmm. A subject. Uh huh. Say is. Say is. Uh, it's not possible. Uh, uh, some someone. Uh, to to get. Okay. Let's, I'm sorry, Gilberto. Let's start. Infinite. From Aha, uh -huh. but let's start from here, from get. Yes, teacher. Start Hello. from So we start with get. Then where is the someone? The someone who is uh, the, the someone? The someone, the customer. Okay, all those customers. Toda la frase, all those customers. All the customers. Uh -huh. uh, infinity verb to feel. Uh -huh. To feel, very good. Mm -hmm. And the and rest? The compre and, the, and the rest of the complement in the five weeks, the brands at short time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, let's continue with uh, the two other examples we have, one for each. Uh, let me see. I don't know if Andres, are you already participating? Or Israel, Israel, can you help us with this this one, the, the third one for make? Again, let's identify the form of make, the someone and the verb in base form. Israel, are you there? Okay, let's see somebody else. Um Sophia. Okay, what would be the form of make that we have in this example? Hello, teacher. Uh, it means uh, uh, a structure? Yes, we are analyzing the structure of the example. So first we identify the word, the form of make, then who is the someone and then what is the verb in base form in the last example this one um, some uh, may may is in past uh-huh okay mm -hmm. someone is the customer Consumers. Uh, consume, consumers and the verb is prefer. Okay, verb in base form, prefer. Okay, let's now check the last one. Uh, let me see. Okay, most of you are listeners today, so <laughs> we will have to repeat. Um, Okay, Gabriela, the last one here, forget. What is the form of get that we have in this example? Um, the get it is get <laughs> and someone, people, and infinitive to order. Mm-hmm. Okay, just one correction, uh, Gabriela. We'll get. 
Ajá, es will get. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, what I want you to see is that the verb, okay, here, eh, the verb make and the verb get are working as main actions in the sentence or main verbs, okay? So uh -huh. this is the verb that we are going to conjugate. For example, in this, in this case, right, the sentence is in simple present. So uh -huh. because the subject is, is singular, we say makes, right? In the second uh -huh. example, the, the sentence is in the past, right? So we make. conjugate the make in the past. In the last example here, is the sentence is also in the past. So the verb that gets conjugated is make in the past. And in the case of get, in the first example, we are using a, a modal, the modal can, which usually is for the present, right? In this case, it's for present. Um, and then in the second example, uh, let me see the the project manager said it is not possible to get so um, in this case we are using this is actually a, a little different because um we have in this case the verb the main verb is sell okay so we are talking about it in the past but then uh, we are using this to get and also um, like it's the complement of the of the main action, okay? To get all those customers to feel identified. So in the second example, this is a complex sentence and that's why you see that it has here two, uh, I mean, it's repeated, right? Like, to get, to feel. Um, now, the last example uh, is in the future, right? Uh, the advertising events will get. So in this case, the, the verb get is being conjugated in the future. But we are following the same structure in, in get for using infinitive, right? After the someone. Well, um, I don't know if there is any question with the structure so far. Please, can you raise your hand or give me a thumbs up, okay? Give me a thumbs up if everything is clear in terms of the structure. Thumbs up, please. Okay, thumbs up, thumbs up. Is everything clear? That is the question. Is everything clear? Or you can say in the microphone, yes, no, maybe. Yes, okay. teacher, for me. Thank you, Gabriela. And uh, let's see, yes, it's clear. Okay, very good. So now it's time to practice with these exercises in the in the manual, okay? We have a exercise five and we're going to use the verbs in parentheses to complete the sentences. Okay, because there are not many people participating today, we're going to do it together, okay? Um, well, we have an example. Customers' attention makes companies try every sort of strategy. So here we have the verbs make and the verb try. And we need to conjugate them, right? Okay, number two. Um, let's see, Gilberto, can you help me? Marketing helps businesses. Here we are using get and buy. So marketing helps businesses. Gex. Gex. Marketing uh -huh. helps businesses. Gex. Okay. One second, please. Okay. Marketing helps businesses. 
get, get, uh -huh, get and buy. Okay, get customers. Buy. Mm, look at the structure. Look at the structure of this verb. When we use get, we have to buy, get. Uh, to buy. Customer to buy. To buy. Mm -hmm. to buy. Yes. Helps businesses get customers to buy products. Okay, very good. Now let's see number three. We can't, in this case, we're using make and like. So um, let me see. Gabriela, we can't. We are using make and like. <clears throat> okay, how about Mr. Israel? Are you there? Yes, teacher, I'm here. Okay, so let's check number three. Uh, we are using, in this case, make and like. So we can't. We can, let me see. The weekend people like. Weekend people. Uh, you said like or no no we are using both okay oh mm -hmm. follow this structure look at this text that we have here at the like in red here we have the subject then you have make then you add someone and then you add like the action do something so in this case I think it could be uh I don't know. We can't do people like our products without the right strategy. Okay, this is fine. Like. Mm -hmm. But here you need the other verb. Since you already used like, which verb do you need here? We can uh the same verb in past <laughs> no we, we have both verbs here we have make and we have like okay so ah, we can make we can make people like our product <laughs> yes mm -hmm. that's that's how it goes we can't make people like our products without the right strategy mm -hmm. We are talking about the causative, remember? Um, so that's how the causative goes with make. Okay, let's see uh, someone else for the next one, number four. Andres, go ahead. Okay, do you wanna participate with number four? Yes, teacher, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I, I turned out. No, 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 I haven't sent you the micro. Uh, okay. Only stores get their loyal customers to help with. Uh -huh. Get their loyal customers to help. Uh -huh. To help with advertising events. Excellent. Uh huh. Because we are using get, right? We need the the other verb in this case help with two. two. Yes. Yes, two. yes. Okay, perfect. Let's see number five. Who is here to help us? Let me check. Mm. 
Sofia, could you help us with number five? The marketing director. Make, make people. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, here we have we have Bored. two possibilities. I uh have -huh, because the sentence is a little bit ambiguous. We can use it in the present or in the past. Mm -hmm. The marketing director mm -hmm. make people border to the best ad. Okay. Make people. Now here, um, Sophia, we cannot conjugate the second verb, okay? Vote. Uh -huh. It's only vote because the structure goes with, remember here is a um, base form. Okay, mm -hmm. so the director, the marketing director, in this case, we need to correct because it's makes. Okay, it would be make. If we use it in the present, makes. Okay, the marketing director makes people vote for their best ads. Mm -hmm. Or it could be also because there is no other like context, right? It is possible to use it in the past. The marketing director made people vote for the best ads in the past. Okay, made. Andres, you wanna do the last one? Yes, I, your hand is up from the previous. <laughs> yes, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, top businesses. Top well, businesses make their employees. Uh -huh. They constantly finding some marketing. Okay, top businesses make their employees. Their employees mm -hmm. takes takes. Or Oops. takes okay. take constant training so marketing. Uh huh. Now here we don't say takes because remember this is this verb needs to stay in the base form. Okay. Okay. The second okay. verb uh -huh, it stays in the base form when you use it with make. Okay. Mm -hmm. So notice, notice the difference again in this uh, in this exercise. Let's repeat. Let's review the structure. Okay. So, for example, number one is the example we are using make, and then the second verb is try, is in base form. Um, we are conjugating make. In number two, we have get, and because we are using get, the second verb needs to be in infinitive, to, to buy. In the third example, we have make, okay? And the second verb is like. So we keep it in the base form because we're using make. In number four, we are using get. So the second verb is in infinitive. That is the structure that we follow when we have get. In number five, we are using make, okay? And the second verb is vote. So vote stays in the base form. And the last one, the verb is make. So the second verb is also in base form because we are using make. Is okay. it depends from the third person or for the other person like they are, we, I? No. We don't. No, 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 no. But, but I, but I can see uh, just a, a question, teacher. I can see with like uh, customers, uh -huh. we change make and makes, and ah. the marketing director we use makes and not make. Exactly. The, the yes. first word, yes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in this case, remember, get and make are the main actions. 
So, yes. um, uh -huh, they are conjugated according to the subject, right? Or also, if the context of this of the sentence tells you that it needs to be in the past or in the present, in the future, yes, you conjugate the verb get or the verb make. Uh -huh. For example, a, in number five, we say the marketing director makes in the simple present, right? Because I'm talking about one person, third person. In number six, top businesses, because it's general, right? It's like when you say they, they make. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so they make and get are conjugated according to the context of the sentence in the subject. But the, yes. the verb that don't change, the verbs that don't change are the, the second. Mm -hmm. These ones don't change. Yes, teacher. Okay, any other question or comment about uh, based on these examples in the exercise? No? Okay, well, before we get into the other part of this lesson, I would like you to do an extra uh, practice with this structure. So I would like you to please uh, think about two examples, one where you're using get and one where you are using make, okay? So I'm gonna give you a few minutes for you to think about and write on your, on your in the chat. Okay, let me uh, write here the task. Okay, create a one example for make and one example for get. Share it in the chat. Okay, so let's take a few minutes to create one example for each. Thank you. 
Okay, I see Israel has shared his examples. Your dreams can make true if you really believe in them. <laughs> Okay, in this case, Israel, um, we are using these two verbs uh, in the causative, um, the causative structure. So let me show you. Well, you can you can check the the, the examples here in the in the exercise, but also let me go up a little bit. Here. Um, here. Let's focus on this part where we see the structure. Vamos a tomar una pequeña captura. Okay, ya se la voy a compartir en el chat just to to help you remember. <laughs> I like your second example. Let's make a plan. And what is the plan? I guess <laughs> Okay, so the structure goes make, and then you you mention someone, and then another action in base form. Okay. So for example, in, in your first case, a, make your dreams come true. It could be. You can make your dreams come true. If you really believe in them, you can make your dreams come true. Ahí estaríamos usando la estructura del causative. You can make your dreams come true. Uh, the second one, let's get the last here before someone gets it. Um, in this case, we're using get uh, as the usual meaning, okay? Uh, but in order to use it as the causative, we could say, for example, um, let's get, let's get a, um, our, let's get our friend take the last chair before someone else does, for example, using the same idea, but with the with the causative structure let's get our friend take the last share before someone else okay and in that case you're using the structure get someone in this case get our friend let's get our friend to take I used to use under infinitive to take the last share, etc. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we have more examples? Andres. Okay, Gilberto. My boss makes. Um, Okay, I'm not sure what you meant in the in your example, Gilberto. Um, what is your idea? My boss promueve la venta de nuestro producto. Ah, okay. 
But remember, the causative is that your boss makes probably you promote the products. Okay. Eh, okay. El, 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 el significado principal de esta estructura que estamos viendo ahorita, que es el causative, es que alguien más le haga a usted o a otra persona hacer algo. Ok, ese es el make. Y en el caso de get, as we saw in the video, get has a, a little bit of a different meaning because in the case of get, it's like you convince people to do something. Ok, so in your example, Gilberto, let me uh, write it here. It would be to use the causative, we could say, my boss makes me. O sea, a usted lo hace que promote uh, our products to sell them. Así. Ahí estaríamos usando el causative porque tenemos my boss makes, ahí va el make, and then who is the someone? You. Makes me, right? And then you have the verb in base yes. form, que es promote. Promote, yes. Mm -hmm. Our product to sell them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I'm going to check Andres' example. I'm going to get my hair cut tomorrow. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. That's a... Uh, um, the company makes us wear uniforms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Teacher, I just have a, it's, I know that it depends from the context because in this case, uh, of course we have to use before to, the auxiliary to, for the sentences make sense. Ah, okay. The thing in your first example, My Andres, the thing, is, the thing is that you are using it like with a little yes. bit of different meaning. Okay? Yes. Uh -huh. In this case, because you are not talking about a person, you're talking about your hair. So yeah, exactly. It, uh -huh. So in that case, uh, we can say that it's still the causative but I mean, grammatically, your example is okay. Is is correct, um, because you are using you are using it with hair, okay. In in this case, it's not like you are using it uh, with the meaning of convincing. It's the meaning of like you somebody else is going to hurt to cut your hair, okay. So that is the meaning. Um, yes. Uh huh. So it's a, it's different from, from the structure that we are using right now. In this case, we can say, for example, I'm going to get my sister to cut my hair, okay? Okay. And in that case, you are using, after get, you're using my sister, okay? So you need to use, in this case, a person, someone. Mm -hmm. Someone, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you convince your sister to cut in your In this hair. case, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to get my sister cut, to cut my, my hair. Exactly, uh-huh, to cut my hair. Yes. Cut my hair. Because remember the meaning in this case is like convince. Convince yes. someone to do something for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Um, okay, Gilberto, my customers get cinnamon to like first quality. Mm, okay, let's make sure we follow the, the structure. Let me, I'm gonna share the screen again. Okay, so we have the verb get, and then you need to use someone, Gilberto. Someone. In, the, in your example, uh, you are, you, cinnamon is not someone. Cinnamon is a, 
a spice, a, an object, a thing. Okay, so you need to talk about someone. Now, how can you use your idea or how can we use your idea? Vamos a poner así. Eh, let's see. Okay, I could say, I eh, I got, let's do it in the past. I got my customers to like first quality cinnamon. Okay, teacher. I, I got, got my customers. I got my customers to like first quality cinnamon. Mm -hmm. In remember the structure goes get okay. plus someone. In this case, my customers. It needs to be a person, okay? It needs to be a person. I got my yes. customers, and then the infinitive. In this case, to like, to like first quality cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher. Uh, let me see if we have another example here. From Sofia. Okay. The student effort makes to get knowledge about the signature. Mm. Okay, in this case, Sophia, we can... Um, okay, again, I'm gonna focus on the, on the following the structure. So we have make, then we need to have someone. Uh, in the example, we can say if we if we change it a little bit to follow the structure, I can say, for example, a, the teacher, okay, the teacher makes the student makes the student to um makes the student to let me see, let me see. The teacher makes the students um, study to get knowledge about the subject. Vamos a corregir, okay. The teacher makes the students study hard to get knowledge about the subject. Asignatura sería subject. Okay? And we're following the structure, right? Make, then you have someone, the students, and then the verb in base form would be study, study. And the rest is the complement. Okay, teacher. Aha, uh -huh. let's see. What is the other example? I get my goals with discipline. In this case, we are using get in the simple form, the simple use, let's say. In order to make it causative, we need to follow the structure we have here. So for example, um, I get myself, in este caso, porque estoy hablando de mí, mm -hmm. I get myself to um, vamos a cambiar el get por para no repetir. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get myself to um, achieve, we can say achieve my goals with discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, we follow the structure. We have get 
plus someone, in this case, myself, and mm -hmm. then the, the, the verb in infinitive, to achieve. To achieve, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we have the company can get the employees to sign the resignation. Okay, that's perfect. Very good example. Andres? Well, this is, let me tell you, this is one of the, one of those complex structures in English that requires practice, <laughs> right? Um, so don't worry if you if you feel confused about it right now, because actually I think we're going to check uh, some more exercises tomorrow. Let me see. Mm. Aha, but no, but this is with other verbs, but it's the same uh, the same structure, the causative. Mm -hmm. Okay, the security company can't get the security agents to to shoot in the shooting range. Mm -hmm. In this case, just add a double O. It's to shoot, S-H-O-O-T. Yes, the structure is, is, is okay. Okay, well, um... We already did the exercise. I asked you to create new examples. And, um, well, I'm going to give you an extra exercise for you to practice uh, out of class. Give me one second. Okay, positive. I suggest you to take note of the structure and copy the examples. If you don't have the, the, the manual, so you can um, remember the structure. Mm. Okay, here we have other verbs as well, but let me see. Okay, I found this one, but this one instead of ha instead of make, they are using have, but it's. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna share it later because right now I'm only finding with other verbs. I don't want you to get confused. Um, so I'm gonna share it after class so you can practice more. Okay, any question so far or how do you feel about this structure? Based on your practice, I felt like we are a little confused. How do you feel? What do you think? Okay, <laughs> indifferent. <laughs> well, um, so far, we're going to have this practice in terms of the grammar. And uh, as I said, I'm going to share the extra exercise for you to practice out of class. Um, but now we're going to check a uh, vocabulary, okay? We have um, the next activity, which is related to vocabulary. Okay, here. 
exercise number six. We have some descriptions and we need to unscramble the words. Okay, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the word unscramble, but basically it's about organizing the words because they are scrambled right now. We need to put them in order, okay, in other words. So um, let's see. Um, Israel, okay, number one, we have the description. We read the description and then we unscramble the words. Okay, so Israel, can you help me with number one, please? Hello, Israel, are you there? Okay, uh, let's see, Gilberto. Can you please read the description? Uh, the white people recognize the brand. It might be through the logo and other so associated visuals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So remember, this is the description for uh, the word that you have here. So the way people recognize the brand, it may be through the logo or other associated visuals. This is called brand what? Mm -hmm. Brand it, uh -huh. it may be <laughs> okay. We need to unscramble the word. Lo vamos a ordenar, okay? Organizar. Uh -huh. Okay. Brand. It, brand. It. Uh -huh. Remember, this is the description. We are talking about the way people recognize the brand. For example, it may be through the logo or through the image, through the colors. So like in the case of, um, in the case of, um, let me see, Nike, for example. How do you identify the brand? Well, I already told you the word. <laughs> yeah. oh, I uh, identify the logo. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's brand identity. Uh -huh. Brand identity. Identify. Brand identity. The no tenemos identity. aquí, es identity. Mm -hmm. Brand identity. So, I, I, my example was about Nike. How do you, what's the brand identity for Nike? Well, it's a white kind of, I don't know, like a little, um, how do you call it? Like a little colita, <laughs> a little tail. <laughs> Right, a white tail, mm -hmm. and the the word the word Nike above, so that's the identity, right? Um, also for example, Coca Cola, right? Coca Cola, the white letters or red letters, red and white. Yes, identify a red color mm -hmm. the product. Exactly. Or Campero Chicken also. What's the brand identity? The colors, right? Orange, yellow. 
also the the type of letters that they use to write pollo campero so yes that that's brand identity the identity okay. uh -huh. associated with this one exactly uh-huh the way you like you see the colors you see the logo and you know what brand it is right mm -hmm. okay let's see number two um andres just a chair can you read the description brown. Mm -hmm. yeah the idea of the brown that people develop in their minds and what they expect from the brown. Uh huh. Here we have the word. We need to unscramble it. Images. Images. Brand. Brand images. Images. Okay. Very good. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Vamos a ir escribiendo aquí. Give me one second. <coughs> okay. So number one was brand identity. Number two is brand image. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in this case, it's not the actual image, okay? It's not the literal image. This is about the idea that we have in our head about this product, right? Uh, for example, in the case of Nike, what is your idea of Nike? What is the brand image you have for Nike? A shoes. Aha, uh -huh, but what kind of shoes? Yes, Sophia? Sports shoes. It's a check. Aha, uh -huh, it's a, yeah. <laughs> it's a check. Yes, but I mean, remember here, we are not talking about the actual picture. It's more about the idea you have in your head about the brand. So when you think of Nike, what do you think? What ideas come to your head? The slogan, the just do it. Okay. Or the imagine about the sport shoes. Aha. Uh -huh. But also in this case, we need to think about what we expect from the brand. For example, in my case, I will say that um I expect quality. Okay. If I'm gonna pay $150 for a pair of shoes, I expect quality mm -hmm. or comfort. Exactly. Uh -huh. So that is the image. In this case, we're not talking about the actual picture, but it's more about our idea of the brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on with number three. Um, okay, Sophia, help me with the description, please. It is the emotional or personal quality that's customer associated with a particular brand. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the word that we are describing is here. What would that word be if we unscramble it? Brand personality. Personality. Very good. Okay. Personality. Brand personality. Uh, okay, so emotional or personal qualities that customers associate with a particular brand. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not that the, the brand has to be a person. It's a product, right? It's an object many times. But um, we associate a characteristics, emotional characteristics, for example, when we say that, um, let me see, Coca-Cola is, um, what's the slogan for Coca-Cola? I don't, I don't remember. But Coca-Cola tends to be, tends to have this kind of a advertising that is very inspiring. Have you noticed? Um, like, they, for example, they, I remember for Christmas, for example, they have ads that go with like family, uh, family unity, um, family love, right? So, 
something like that. Like brands have this kind of values that they share, right? Uh, or there are some brands that are about luxury, for example, or some other brands that are about um, solidarity or some brands that are about uh, respect, uh, about kindness. Actually, Coca-Cola is about kindness, for example, and so on. Those are some, some ideas. Okay, number four. We have a, okay, let me see who's going to help me. Um, a ver, a ver. I don't know if Gabriela is available. Are you available, Gabriela? If not, we can repeat. Um, okay, Andres, go ahead. A combination of everything that a customer goes through while purchasing and using the brand. Uh huh. Brand so, experience. Experience, okay. Experience. Brand experience. Mm -hmm. Everything that a customer goes through while purchasing and using that brand. So basically the experience starts from the moment you, you buy the product, right? Um, the, the, how do you say, the customer service you get while you are buying the product. Okay, brand experience. And the last one, Mr. Israel, are you there? Can you help me with the last one? Or Mr. Gilberto, go ahead, Mr. Gilberto. Uh, Number five. This a house a brown stone in the crown. Mm -hmm. Brown. Uh, no, no, no llego, no, no encuentro la definición. <laughs> Una palabra larga, ¿verdad? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, but let's let's read the, the definition again. This is how a brand stands out in the crowd. Um, stand out means something that makes you unique. Okay. Like when you are in a crowd, in a group of people. There is something that makes you stand out, something that makes you unique. So how do you call that? When something makes you unique, makes you special, it's a different, I'm helping you. Different. Uh -huh. Differentiation. Differentiation. <laughs> Differentiation. Different. Differentiation. Okay, different. Oops. Differentiation is differentiation. 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 Me suena como esos chistes de de chinos. ¿Cómo se dice tal cosa? <risa> <risa> ah. <risa> ok, differentiation. That's the word. Differentiation. Differentiation. So what, uh -huh. differentiation. what makes you stand, stand out in the crowd? Or in other words, what differentiates you from the rest, right? What makes you special? Yeah. What makes you unique? 
That's pre and differentiation. Okay. Well, um, yes. Okay, so this is some vocabulary we're going to be using later on in another activity. Uh, so we have brand identity is the visual uh, elements, right? Of the brand, the colors, the, um, um, the images, the pictures, say. Then brand image is the idea we have of this brand, right? Uh, the personality is the personal or emotional qualities that we associate with the brand. Experience, everything we um, go through, the moment, since the moment we uh, buy the product. And differentiation, what makes you special or unique. Brand differentiation. Okay, um, well, let me see what we have next because we don't have any more time, but I'm sorry. Okay, um, the last thing we're gonna do, I mean, we were supposed to finish both pages today, but um, it doesn't matter. Tomorrow we can finish that part. But the last thing we can do is uh, check the vocabulary, the matching vocabulary exercise. And then uh, tomorrow we do the speaking part, okay? So um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to be like asking some of you to help me read the, first read the description. So we start with Andres. Can you help me read the description, please? Yes, just teacher. Sure. The customer's perception of the overall quality or superiority of a product. Okay, and we have five options. Brand awareness, perceived quality, brand associations, brand loyalty, or proprietary assets. Uh, I think it could be number two, perceived quality. Okay, perceived quality. Exactly. Perceived I'm, quality. Here in the definition, you have the word perception. Perception, yeah. Uh -huh. And then perceived is like in the same family. Mm -hmm. Perception is the noun, perceived is an adjective, but it's same meaning. Very good. Okay, so number two. Number two. Okay, now let's think of examples as well so we can understand better these definitions. So we're talking about the customer's perception of the overall quality or superiority of a product. Okay, for example, when we compare Coca-Cola and Pepsi, what do you think? Who has better, which brand has better quality? Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Uh -huh. What is your opinion as a customer? Coca-Cola to choose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but how do you know? How do you know it that Coca-Cola is better, that has better quality? In my opinion, it tastes good. The another is a lot of sweet. Pepsi is too sweet. For you? To sweet, yes, in my opinion. Ah, okay, okay. Well, I I I na I mentioned those two because for me they they taste the same. <laughs> Maybe I'm not a I'm not a big soda soda drinker. That's why I cannot make the difference. <laughs> but um yes, I mean sometimes we have a a perceived a quality, right? So a perception of, of quality. Um, or one or the other, in this case, for Coca-Cola. 
Okay, uh, let's see. Gilberto, let's read the second uh, definition, please. Uh, customer constantly purchase product from their preferred brands regarding convenience of price. Uh -huh. I seen teacher. Um, brand loyalty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brand loyalty. Yes. When you are loyal to a brand, you buy it regardless of price, right? Regardless of convenience or price. Convenience in this case, for example, you may travel long distances just to buy what you want. Okay, let's move on because we, we are almost over with time. Andres, uh, let's do the next, please. Oops, okay, sorry. teacher. Um, it's time to wait consumers co consumers are familiar with the distinctive qualities of a brand. Aha. Uh -huh. Extent to which consumers are familiar with the distinctive qualities of a brand. Uh -huh. Brand loyalty. Uh, that was the, the previous. No, 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 I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Brand uh, awareness. Awareness, yes. Brand awareness. awareness. Mm -hmm. Definitely, because we're talking about how much you know the brand, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Brand awareness. So okay. Awareness. Sophia. Awareness, yes. Sophia, can you please do the next one? Okay. All information that is considered in the realm of intellectual property that offers competitive advantage and that is should not be disclosed. Mm -hmm. mm. We have proprietary uh, property access. Property property access. Okay, proprietary assets. Okay. So it means, uh -huh, like, for example, they say that Coca-Cola recipe is a secret, right? So that's an example. So other people cannot copy it. Okay, and of course, the last one, the attributes of a brand that come into the consumer's mind when the brand is discussed, that is brand associations, right? What do you associate the brand with? Um, as I was saying before, like family unity, respect, love, a kindness, all those. Okay, so we're going to stop here. Uh, tomorrow we're going to do the speaking practice. And also, um, uh, well, I'm going to share some other extra practice for the use of make and get which I think we need to practice a bit more. So I'll send it to the WhatsApp chat, okay? I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm gonna check attendance very quickly. Oh, okay, and let's see. Okay, Danny Anthony, Siguenza Ventura. Is he here as a listener? Okay, Gilberto Benito Santa Maria Rios. Here, teacher. Eh, Jose Andres Martinez Perez. Present, teacher. Eh, Jose Israel Martinez Rodriguez. I think he fell asleep. <laughs> You have been absent, Israel. Julio Aristides Paz Rivas. As a listener, I guess, Julio, yes. Um, lady, Joana Hernandez Ventura, listener. Uh, Luis Rodrigo Morales Ortiz, listener. María Leticia Religeño González. 
Well, Rodrigo is not here anymore. I don't see him. Present teacher. Leticia, yes. Okay. Eh, Mauricio de Jesús Buruca, listener. Eh, Rebeca María Cardona, listener. Roberto Carlos Gámez, not here right now. I don't see you, Roberto. Um, Rolando Danilo Sánchez, yes, listener. Sofía Karina Crespo Martínez. Present teacher. Okay, and Yesenia Gabriela Aguilar Granadino. Gabriela? Okay, well, um, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Good day. Take care. Thank you, Good night. Bye-bye. Good, Good night, teacher. Good night.